In this video, we're going to make a giant button on the wood lathe. Should be fun. I appreciate you watching today. In this video, we're going to continue my series on easy wood turning projects. In this video, we're going to make a giant wooden button. And this button is meant to be used as a wall hanging. So if you know of any crafters or people that are into sewing, this would make a great gift for them. I'm Jason Geyser, and this is Geyser Woodturner. Let's make a giant wall hanging button. So I found this piece of western soft maple laying around the shop. I've had it for about two years and didn't know what to do with it, so we're going to make a big button. And I've marked this out at about 14 and a half inches, and we'll make a cut there. This will be our center board. And so I'll mark the center here just so I know if I have enough wood to make my circle. And I'll set up my compass at seven inches. And we're gonna draw a 14 inch circle on this. And you can see it doesn't quite go all the way to the end. You leave a little bit of room, a little bit extra wood. And I measured that circle to see if I could make these two boards a little bit shorter and I could. It, with a half inch on either side of the line of the circle, I could still make these boards at 13 inches. So, just measuring to make sure that I'll have enough wood and I've got plenty extra on the ends to make a 14 inch circle. So we'll cut another board at 13 inches. Since I'm gluing up this piece, I want to make sure my joints are really nice and even. So I'm going to make a couple of passes on each board in the joiner. We'll bring it up to the table saw and I'll put that jointed edge against the fence and then we're going to trim off just a little bit to make sure it's nice and parallel on all three of those boards. And that way when I go to do my glue up I'll just have to check them and make sure they're good and everything should be alright. And when I'm gluing up a board I'll make a line here on the grain pattern and that is the cup of the grain pattern. I want to know which direction that's going so I can alternate the cup because when wood moves later on you don't want it to all move the same direction and take your piece and curl it up. Alright so I've laid these out where I want them and I put a reference line on there and then I will lay them into the clamps the same way and line up my reference line and then I'll stand these up here and we're going to get some glue on these guys and I'll just kind of wiggle a line down there kind of like you're putting mustard on a hot dog and then I'll spread out that glue and just use my finger it's not going to hurt me so all right so I'm ready to put that together we'll just drop them down line up all of our reference marks bring up the clamps and then we'll check and make sure everything's flush and the wood likes to move around in the glue a little bit so as you tighten the clamps tighten them a little and then just keep adjusting and then one more clamp on top for alternating pressure and wait about 20 minutes okay now that that's set up about 20 minutes I can take the clamps off and I've got to scrape this glue off and it helps if you don't let it dry all the way you just wait 20 minutes and then you can scrape it off with a putty knife without having it tear out. Okay, so now I just want to draw in the rest of my circle. I have a complete wood blank here and I just want to know what it's going to look like. So we'll bring our wood blank over to the bandsaw and the idea is that I want to cut and rough out a circle. I don't necessarily have to have it perfect. If I wanted it to be a perfect circle, I'd have to have a jig with a point and slowly rotate it around and have a nice sharp bandsaw blade. Uh, basically, all you really want to do is make sure that you keep that blade outside your line and we can fix everything else on the wood lathe, which is really cool about wood turning. We just want to remove enough material so it's going to save us time and we're not going to have any big pieces flying at us. Alright, so we have a circle. 
So on the back side of our wood blank, we need to flatten it out. So I'm going to take the belt sander and sand off the glue lines and any pencil lines. I want to try and be careful and save that center point that we have in the middle because I'm going to need that to line up our face plate. So basically I'm going to mount a face plate on the back and if you have a small one like this, you could do that, especially if you're doing a smaller button, but I want my hole spacing on my buttonholes to be a little bit bigger. So I've made this face plate that I can put into my chuck and I've got a four inch circle for those holes. All right, so in order to center this, I'll bring up my compass and set it to the exact radius and then I can use that center point that we saved to draw a line just for alignment on the back. So as I bring my wooden face plate up here, I just have to line it up with that outside line. And then I'll be ready to put some screws in. You wanna try and use a pretty heavy screw here. You don't wanna use drywall screws. And we'll mount that face plate in there. And we can adjust it a little bit as we put in the second screw. And then it shouldn't move after that. We should be able to put in all the rest of our screws. Now we get to mount it to the lathe and turn it. So we'll bring up the chuck and we'll bring up our piece with our face plate attached and we'll mount that face plate into the chuck jaws. And I put a reference mark on here with my number one chuck jaw. So it kind of goes in the same way that it came out. And hopefully that'll make everything more true. Okay, so we'll tighten that up. As I bring up my tool rest, I'm going to give it a few spins and make sure that nothing's going to hit and everything's going to clear and I can lock that down. Now for this piece, we're going to rough it with a bowl gouge. And I'm just going to tip that flute a little to the side and we'll keep that bevel aligned as we come across. I'll turn on the lathe slowly and then bring it up to speed. And then we're just going to make a series of passes with the bowl gouge to get this piece to round. So I'll come part of the way across and I'll stop a little ways from the end. If I continue all the way out the end, I could rip out some fibers and blow that out and I don't want to do that. So instead I'll turn the bowl gouge around and come the other way and we'll just go back and forth, back and forth without going all the way to the end and risking ripping out any fibers. We'll just keep doing that until we get down close to our line and get this piece round. It'll get to the point where you can feel your cut and all the bounciness will go out of it and you'll be able to tell that it's round. But it's a good idea to stop and rotate it and make sure you don't have any tear out areas and just make sure there's no flat spots left. And I figure since it's already here, I'm going to go ahead and round and ease over these corners just so I don't have to go back and do that later. So I'll just take the bowl gouge and start on the back side corner and just round that over. Once I have the backside curve about where I want it, where it's looking good, then I'll switch over and do the front side curve. And you can just round it over. You can make a really deep curve if you plan on just making a rounded bead on the front. But do whatever you like, whatever looks good and whatever you think looks like a button. And I've got the tool kind of tipped to the side and you'll see that I'm kind of scraping on the wing and then kind of drawing that over into a into a pull cut. Um, you could use lots of different cuts for this. This is just the one I'm using on this project. As we get to the face of our button, we're going to switch out the tool rest and I'll put a, a longer tool rest in here so that I don't have to stop and move the tool rest very often. 
and what we're going to do is make some cuts across the face because no matter how hard you try to get everything aligned and perfect it never will be so we're going to clean up the face and make sure that it's all flat and true first and then we'll begin to shape our button so i'm just going to do a, a pull cut with the ball gouge and work it across the face start slowly in the center and work our way out and it's usually a little bit more off towards the outside and we'll just work our way down with the ball gouge uh, making a series of passes until we get that whole face flat and true and then we can begin to make some cuts on it and make it into a button shape as I get towards the end I'll start to feel where the bumpiness goes out of it and I get a continuous smooth cut on the piece of wood and that's one way you can tell if it's becoming true and to flatten it out I'm going to make one more pass here and you can always stop and test it with a ruler and make sure that you're completely flat but I think that'll look good and do fine for us now I want to remember that there are screws in this piece of wood on the back side and they come in a little ways so I'm going to draw a circle on here where those screws are at so that as I design the face of this I'm not going to hit those screws with my ball gouge um, that's something that would be bad for my safety and I'd have to do a lot of sharpening on that tool so to start out we're just going to do a push cut and I'll start in the center and tip the handle way over so that I can keep that bevel riding on the piece of wood and then we'll just kind of see where that tip starts to grab and we'll start pushing outward sometimes you have to feel how aggressive you need to get on this cut we'll come out to about the line where our screws are at and we'll keep going along now I want to think about the design of this button a little bit and so I'm gonna put a little pencil line out here that I think I want to curve the outside and the inside down to so we'll pick up that push cut again and we'll come across the face of our button and we'll bring it out to that line approximately that's pretty good then from the point of the screws down I'm gonna continue to make a few passes and get that just a little bit deeper what I wanted to do here is pretty much make a dome type shape in the center and I'll try and smooth that up as best as I can and take it as as deep as I want to on the outside edge here it'll come to a point where I'm gonna have to round this other corner here so I'll just roll a half of a bead here resting the bevel on the piece of wood and then rotating around and then pointing that bevel right into where I want to stop and you'll notice a lot of bumpiness in my face here um, one of the reasons for that is I'm just not accustomed to doing a push cut this direction doing face work so this is a good project for me because it allows me to practice that now if I want to smooth that out I think what I'm going to do is take a final pass from the center all the way out and if I try and keep that tip just barely into the piece of wood and ride that ridge I should be able to smooth that out another thing I could have done is to sharpen my tool for this final pass and sometimes that helps immensely to take out all the rough edges and things like that but I think I did fairly well and it's good practice for another piece so we'll define this little corner in here and we should be ready to sand our button all right so I'm not quite ready to sand so I'm gonna take my skew chisel that's my rounded skew chisel and use it like a negative rake scraper and I'll come across the surface and try and smooth everything out because one of the things that I don't like to do is sand a whole bunch and 
So if you can get a smooth finish off the tool first, um, that's always better to try. But I want to make sure that I'm taking really light cuts here, that I'm getting little thin wispy shavings off of my tool. Otherwise, if you scrape, you can cause a little bit of tear out and then you'll have to fill that in or sand more and you don't want that. That's a much better surface that's ready to sand. So I'm gonna start with a 120 grit and slow down the lathe so I don't build up too much heat and we'll just sand across this surface and get it as smooth as I can with the 120 grit. And then I'll move on to other grits and I'll probably go to about a 220 or 320 grit to finish. I'm going to go ahead and put some finish on this while it's on the lathe. That just makes it a little bit easier. And what we're going to want to do is wipe that on. This is a friction polish that's made from shellac, boiled linseed oil, and denatured alcohol. And we'll put that all over the piece. And we'll turn the lathe on and then add some heat in the form of friction. So I'll rub the towel on the piece and it'll help everything dry and set up to a nice glossy finish. And what you want to do with this finish is you'll put a wet coat on and then friction polish it and then put a wet coat on and friction polish it and you can build up the layers. I'm really only going to do a couple of layers here. So with our finished piece, I'll put down a cloth so that I don't scratch anything up, and I'll remove these screws that hold our faceplate in place, and I'll label this faceplate so that I can use it for later and do this project again. As I get to this last screw, I find out that it has broken off, and that's one of those things that happens sometimes. It's not desirable, but it's one of those lessons that you have to learn, and my lesson that I learned is I'll probably move to a thicker screw next time uh, so that I don't break it off or since I drove it in with an impact driver I uh, might have put too much pressure on that screw and broken it. So one thing I could do is use a screwdriver for the last little bit to put in the screw so that I don't break it. Now I'll just use some pliers or some vice grips and get this little screw out of here and we'll be able to move on lessons learned. So as we start drilling our buttonholes I'm going to put a backer board underneath this to put support underneath and we're going to use a small drill bit and this is an eighth of an inch and we're going to drill out those screw holes that we had before. I'm just going to drill all the way through the piece of wood And the reason I'm using a small drill bit is because I don't want it to bust out on the other side. Usually when you put a lot of pressure as you're coming through the end of the piece of wood, it'll, it'll tear out, even with a backer there sometimes. Now from the front side, we can make our buttonhole. I'm going to make these buttonholes three quarters of an inch. You can do whatever size you like. So I put in a three quarter inch Forstner bit and I'll put the pilot point right into that hole and then I'll have something to guide me all the way in and make a really nice clean cut as I get started. And we'll take that hole and push it all the way down but not all the way through. And you'll see what I mean here in a minute. And So take the drill bit out and keep checking. Once we get it down to where just the point is coming through the piece of wood that's exactly what we want. So we'll flip the piece over and we'll go ahead and put the point in that hole and go the rest of the way through. And those holes will join up and you'll get this little wood disc that you can pop out of there. But you can see there's no tear out on the back side and we have a nice clean hole on both sides. So we're going to continue that and do the rest of these three holes. And I suppose that you could use a paddle bit or something like that if you have one. A uh, Forstner bit is going to make the cleanest cut. But we'll go ahead and drill these out and get them down to where we can flip this piece over and do the other three holes.
One thing I've seen people do with these buttons is they take some string or some rope and loop it through these buttonholes to make it look like the button is actually sewn onto the wall. So that's one idea. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll make sure that we punch all the way through and we have our holes and we can punch those discs out of there and then we'll just have a little bit more sanding to do and then we'll have our button completed. So I'll take a random orbital sander and we'll just sand off the pencil line that I have there and smooth up everything that was underneath that faceplate. That looks pretty good. I'll take some sandpaper and ease over those edges to make sure they're not sharp on the front and the back. There we go. Now we can put some finish on this and try and get it down in the holes so that we can match the color. You're not going to get quite the shine off of it because you don't have it on the lathe, but you can polish it up the best you can. We'll do a little bit on the back side in those places where we had it covered by the faceplate. Then I'll roll up my paper towel and try and get as much as that of that finish on the inside as I can. That looks pretty good. Looks like we have a completed button. So that was pretty cool. Now we've got this giant button that we can hang on the wall. And one of the ways that you hang these on a wall is you can drive a nail into the wall and hang it right through one of those buttonholes and hang it up like that. Or you can mount some picture hanging hardware to the back and hang it just like you would a regular picture on the wall. Now, one of the things that's great about these is you can do all sorts of different finishes on it. You could do the natural wood finish, which I like. Um, or you could do paints, stains. One of the best is spray paint with a clear coat on top. It looks pretty sharp. And another thing that's really great about this project is you don't have to have a really huge lathe to do this. So you can size it to your lathe and do all sorts of different sizes. And so it's great for everybody. So if you know a crafter that wants one of these, go ahead and make one for them. So if you like this project, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, it's about time. Anyways, I'm really glad that you were here, and we'll see you soon.